My name is Kukule Tumfupi and I'm traveling the African continent in search of up and coming entrepreneurs who are making a difference in their own communities. This is Profit with Purpose. This is what giving back is all about. This is Shiva's Win the Right Way. population is growing rapidly faster than initially thought. The United Nations Children's Fund, UNICEF, recently published revised figures that show an explosive expansion in the number of African youth and children. By 2050, a quarter of the world will be African, with the continent's population likely to double to well over 2 billion people in that same year. Now that's a lot of mouths to feed, a lot more minds to stimulate, and even more people to keep connected. As such, we need entrepreneurs who will leverage on technology in order to work as a catalyst for development. I'm about to meet one such entrepreneur, Jim Bakome, a technology enthusiast based here in Yaoundé, Cameroon. Well, we are here in the city of Yaoundé celebrating an entrepreneur who is looking to make a change in the lives of individuals through the use of technology. Jim Bakome, such a pleasure to meet you and thank you so much for making time. I'd actually like us to start off by getting some perspective on your story and uh, your journey. You are very passionate about technology and all things that have to do with the power of technology. Give us an understanding of your background, especially given your studies in computer science engineering. Yeah, I studied, my background is studies in software engineering at the Siento Hair Institute. It's a high school based in Yaoundé. So after my studies, I worked for the web design company in Cameroon. They are based in Yaoundé too. Then after the web design company, I went to Douala where uh, I was looking for a job. Then on, on my course of looking for a job, um, I noticed uh, I, I'm not really fit for the job. Like I was not really, yeah. That, so you were born entrepreneur? Yeah, I, I believe that was not really my place. So. I really needed to do something on my own. That's why I got into the entrepreneurship field with all the knowledge I got acquired from technology in school. And the passion for entrepreneurship, where did it start? Uh, for me, I believe it's in my veins. It comes from my family. Because um, from my grandfather, my grandfather to my mom, they, like, they, they were entrepreneurs and my mom is still an entrepreneur. So I believe uh, it's in my veins, it goes right in my veins and I just took it from them. Talk to us about some of the two companies you founded and uh, just how exactly you look to bring a change and a difference in the lives of many Cameroonians. The, so the first one is Fantech, which is a, an agricultural platform helping farmers to acquire information, water information, market information and advice from experts. So we've gone up to empowering 100 farmers in Cameroon, 100 farmers in the, in the southwest region and the center region, 100 farmers then. But on the other side, I found that Splufix Studio, which is a design and developing company specialized in innovative products with a human-centered approach. So when you say human-centered approach, it's mostly about designing products, not for brands, but for people who are going to use the brands. So that's, that's how we design, that's how we work at Splufix. I'd like to talk about FarmTech for a little longer, just to get some insight, given that as a continent, Sub-Saharan Africa has at least 60% of the world's most arable land, but yet we still need to tap into that opportunity. How has FarmTech particularly not only changed the lives of Cameroonian farmers, but you've also had to go back to the drawing board slightly to make sure that your product is relevant to the market you want to serve? Yeah, exactly. We've, we've gone to the market in 2016. We've gone to the market, we delivered the product then. By on, on the road, we noticed that we need to upgrade our product, like to really fit for the market. So by the way, then up till now, we've, we are working on an innovative, more innovative product for the farmers. Because we noticed uh, a lot of these farmers are getting online. You know, they are getting online, they're getting to social networks, they're creating groups, and uh, they're connecting with each other, selling their products online, getting information. So that's how we were trying to build something similar where they can really be comfortable there. That's something we're building. Even though now we know, and the other big problem we're trying to solve also with FarmTech is the ability for farmers to sell their product easily. 
Yeah, so that's a very huge problem here in Cameroon for the farmers. Everybody in the agricultural sector, the main problem is to sell. So that's actually the, the main thing we are working on now. Yeah. Splufik, right? Am I yeah. correct, pronouncing it correctly? Yeah, Splufik. Splufik, yeah. Tell us where the inspiration for this okay. name comes from. And Splufik uh, it comes from a pigeon word. Splufik, what does that mean in pigeon? Uh, Splufik means incredible, unique, amazing, extraordinary. So we chose the name because we wanted to build products that are amazing, that are extraordinary, that are unique for our clients. Like, you know, once you come out with a product from Splufik, you know, it's really unique. At Splufik, we are not, we are not, we are not uh, static. We are, very, we are very dynamic with our clients. So today, if you meet, we meet up with a client who wants a particular project and he wants some other additional values on, on his project, so we know that if he needs that, that means some, somewhere else another client may need that. So we try to include it in our working schedule so that the next time we come up with a new client, we're not proposing that, okay, this is the additional value we can give to you. And some of the clients are like, wow, that's interesting. How did you know you wanted this? You say, no, uh, like it's, we are working hard. We're trying to, yeah. to be creative with you all, all the time. Exactly. And you have a very young team as Blufik and naturally with the entrepreneurial flair that you have, trying to address the needs of people. But how do you go beyond just making a profit and really trying to serve a purpose within your society? So we want to share the experience with startup. Like uh, we, tr we are trying to open a program for startup. So you would be mentoring them? Yeah, like uh, branding, business development, to, to help them bring like the startup at least one step further. Then from there they can easily go, go from where they want. And uh, now we are also working on organizing uh, UI design masterclass, graphic, master, graphic design masterclass to share our knowledge with other youth around who are interested, who are interested in the in design in the field. So we are working to organize this kind of stuff so that we can share what we've acquired, what we've gained from clients, what clients really need. We can tell the people around that, okay, it's not just a matter of getting into the field and say, I want to get money, I want to, I want to be a designer, I want to get money, I want to be a developer. It's about giving value, like changing the life of people with just a single line of code that we are doing here. Jim, we are in a local coffee shop here in Yaoundé, a place that you frequent quite often. Tell us about this place and its significance to your life. Yeah, the significance of my life, I love coffee. and I love coffee and uh, I love the environment here. I love the, the people here. So that's why I often come to this place, like to meet my people, with friends, with family, to, to take a cup of coffee, a cup of juice or to take a burger or something like that. So that's why I'm always here. Talk to us about uh, your passions. I know that uh, you are an avid fan of coffee, as you've mentioned. You're also quite keen on sports, but what else do you do as Jim in order to relieve yourself from the stresses of being an entrepreneur? I like playing pool. I play a lot of pool, then the football pool, yeah. That's the mobile application. I'm, 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 I like, I'm really good at the football pool and mobile application, but on the real pool, it's not that good. So, but I love pool. I also love football, basketball, like, I, I, I like watching sports. Then I'm also a big fan of Afrobeat, Afro music. Yeah, yeah, Afro music. I love it. Especially Nigerian music. Oh, you love Nigerian music? Yeah, Nigerian music. Then... Chop in morning. <laughs> <laughs> no, chop in morning. Uh, Davido, uh, whiskey, like, yes, all these young uh, uh, Nigerian music, and also Afro jazz, like, I like, every, I like all the kind of music that is just Afro, like Afro jazz, Afro beats, Afro soul, yes, I like it. Speak to us about your father. You mentioned that you do come from a family of entrepreneurs who are very focused and driven. Um, and even though they have their reservations about you becoming an entrepreneur, they still serve as a great source of inspiration for you. And especially my mom. She, I, like, I, like, I like the way she, she does things and uh, she's been in the, into the field while, since very young, you know. She's been there very young, so she, that's my first inspiration, first of all. I like, I like the way she does her things. So what keeps you motivated? We in Yaoundé, we can hear the busyness and the bustling of the city, uh, which is quite active and alive with entrepreneurship, but how do you make sure that you keep motivated, you stay on track, and you never give up, even though you might experience setbacks in your business? Yeah, what keeps me motivated? I think it's because I like having fun a lot of time. That's why I'm always motivated. So uh, every day I'm having fun, and since I want to have fun every day, I, need, I know I need to, to work hard so that tomorrow I can come here and take a cup of coffee, 
how you can go there and, and uh, play pool, you know, because the, the, it's the stress that makes me to, to have fun. And the stress, the, the stress plus the fun makes me motivated. So that's how my things are. Yeah. And do you find that when you uh, network and engage with your peers in an environment like this one, that a lot of you are on the same page and have similar thinking um, in order to, to exchange potential partnerships for your business? Exactly. Um, a lot of fields we need to learn into the entrepreneurship field. Uh, we are on the same, we're on the same track. You know, all of us have the same vision. Like we want to bring impact into the country. We want to build great enterprise. We want to employ, reduce the un unemployment rate. So all of us have the same vision. But now we don't have the same mentality or the same feeling with each other. So it's just, it's, I, I believe it's just the vision that makes us come closer. Yeah. Well, Jim, we also live in a world where for a lot of young Africans, the true definition of success is fast cars, having lots of money, traveling throughout the world. And I'm sure these are some of your ambitions too. So how do you strike a balance between making your business profitable and attaining all of these physical things? And secondly, also serving a purpose in your society? Uh, I believe, how do I make the difference? It's mostly uh, from from, from the way I've, I've, I've grown up, the way I've grown up, like uh, the way my parents uh, learned me how, about life, how life is. So from that knowledge, then I, I believe that I have the experience to manage between all of this, like between the life, getting money, traveling, and at the same time, I believe it's, it's a matter of staying humble and serving people around you. So I believe my parents they taught me a lot about life and. That's what I'm using, and I'm using that same knowledge to have everything 50-50. And on your future objectives and the goals that you hope to achieve, what difference do you hope to make in society, especially in the lives of the people you serve? The difference, yeah. As I said, the difference I, I hope to, to make in the life of people is first of all to bring them value, is uh, to make them people around me, people with whom I'm working, people who are in my network, my, my mission, I believe, is to make them have a sustainable livelihood. Anybody working with me or anybody using my service or using our products, my, I believe my mission is to enable them to have a sustainable livelihood and uh, improve their living standards. Talking about bringing the best out of everyone, how do you bring the best out of yourself? What are your key principles and rules to live by in order to attain success and be a good leader? Yeah, to, to bring the best out of me, one thing I know is I never give up. I work very hard and uh, mm, I love what I do, first of all. And I learn every day, every second. And I'm very humble because if you don't learn and you're not humble, then you, you will stay on the same path. So I make myself, I make sure I'm always humble in front of anybody, like even if I'm a five year old kid, I make sure I'm humble, listen to him. He can tell me something that can be important for the, for the next days or for my business. So it makes sure I'm always humble and uh, that's how I do it. Hypothetically speaking, if you could be president for a day in Cameroon, what would you change? The way the country runs, like, it needs to be more dynamic. For me, it's more static. And so if I'm there one day, but it needs to be more dynamic, yeah. Jim, thank you so much for inviting us into your space today where we're actually in the heartbeat of where you do business in Yaoundé. Tell us more about where we are and what the space is used for. Okay, so you're welcome. You are at Nguso in Yaoundé and here is Proofix Studio. Actually, we, in this space we do web design and uh, graphic design, mobile application development too. So now the business in Yaoundé um, is quite difficult. You know, since it's mostly an administrative city, so it's quite difficult for payments especially. Like there are clients, but for the payments, it's very difficult for us to be working here. And also, the quality of work we do here in Cameroon, like people don't really care about that. Like they just want to get something done. They don't really care about you, you giving them a beautiful website, a beautiful application, or an, a creative graphic design work. So they just want something done and they're, they're not really ready to pay for the necessary work. So 
So how do you manage some of those challenges? Because you work with a team that we can see behind yes. you. So uh, challenges of finances, challenges regarding uh, proper payments as well for your business. How do you navigate the landscape? Okay. So basically we try to make our niche outside of the country. So we have some clients outside of the country who are really Cameroonians living outside of the country who are ready to pay for the value, who are ready to give money for the value we do. So now we have, uh, they come from the US and the Germany and France. We do graphic design to them, we do websites, we do mobile applications. Now, like now we are working on a mobile application, an e-commerce platform for a client. So most of, our, most of our clients, they come from outside the country and Cameroonians only. So that's how we try to manage it all. But now for Cameroon here, how do we do? We mostly work here with contracts. Like once we do a contract, we must give like 90% before we start working. Because we know we'll be running behind you for the next 10%. So instead of giving 50, 50 or 40, 60, we prefer to get a majority percentage. Then later on, like we know the process. You'll be working day and night toward the client to get the money and uh, it's difficult. It makes sense uh, trying to make sure that you've got all the necessary yeah. resources. Yeah. Speaking of resources, you also have some staff that work with you. Yeah. Uh, talk to us about who they are and uh, how big the team is to actually make sure that you address the needs of your company. Okay. So we are a team of five. We are a team of five with three designers, three developers, and one designer and one managing partner who is in Luala. The managing partner is in Luala. The three developers, there's me, there's Lens, Candem, and there's Mark, who is not there, and uh, there's Noglat, who is graphic designer. So all of us, like, it's a very amazing team, creative, like, we, we work from Monday to Sunday, basically. Yeah, Monday to Sunday. What strikes me about your team is that you're all young yeah. and dynamic, so is there a particular secret to how you select some of your team members for this particular company? Yeah, first of all, like, there's our feeling, the feeling between us. You know, we, we don't just want to be like people who are working on stuff. We want to feel like in the family, like friends, like brothers, who can support each other, who can understand each other. So once you're working, it's not just about getting someone's dog. We really need to, we really need to feel ourselves while working. So that's, that's how we like choose our peop people who are working with us. So it's not just a matter of like, you can be very good, but the f if the feeling is not there, we're not sure that you're going to, to deliver the work we want. Like some people, they, if you tell them that we are working on Sunday till 8 p.m., he will tell you it's very difficult for him to work till 8 p.m. But for us now, it's quite easy because we are free. We know we're coming, we're coming to, for us, it's like a playground. So we just come in and then we're playing, we're doing some stuff for the clients. And at the end, we know the client will be satisfied. So that's it. I like that, a playground. So clearly it's an environment that you all like being in. But is that difficult, finding people who have the right feel for the yeah. company? Uh, especially given that uh, in Yaoundé there's a high unemployment rate of youth uh, yeah. across the country. Yeah, there's a very big high rate of unemployment. And, uh, right now, due to the high rate of unemployment, uh, a lot of youths are getting into entrepreneurship in Cameroon. But even that way, it's quite difficult too. Because, you know, they will tell you they're giving um, financement to you to get into entrepreneurship. But once they get in there, they notice that it's really difficult to get the finance. So it's very, very difficult for the youth here in Cameroon. Mm -hmm. But the only thing is like you need to hustle very hard to, to get there. That's what we, and that's what we're trying to do. Well, you've achieved a lot of accolades and attention internationally given some of your business interests. And more importantly for your company, it's not just about the capital and the money. It's also about making a difference in people's lives. How do you believe you've attained shared success? Do you believe you've been successful in your business? Yeah, we, we believe you've, you've successful business because at Spluffic, we don't just build a company. We don't just build brands. What we do is we design and develop for the people who are going to use the brands, who are, who are going to inter in, interact with the brands. And also, the way we work is quite different from all the companies in Cameroon, our work, our design and development work, because we make sure we have daily meetings with our clients on a daily basis. Like if and is that easy? Because I can imagine yeah. there's a lot of traffic in Yaoundé. It's yeah. quite a bustling so city. We either, can hear the traffic outside. Yeah, yeah. either we do it online through WhatsApp, through Google, Google Hangout, through Skype. So we discuss with our clients on a daily basis. Like to get, we tell them just give us anything, anything you feel inside you, give us to us because that little this among all those things, there's some little something little there that will make the difference. So that's how we work with our clients. 
we want to make sure that we don't just deliver websites, we don't just deliver graphic design stuff, we don't just deliver mobile applications. We make sure we de deliver products that will change your life, that will change your business, and. Uh, that we give more values to your customers. What strikes me about uh, your, your interest is that technology is at the center of it all, whether it's related to farm tech or sporefic. Give us an idea as to how best you believe entrepreneurs in Cameroon and across Sub-Saharan Africa really need to leverage off of technology. There's, there's a big potential for technology, first of all, there's a big potential. Even though it is growing slowly, it's going slowly but surely, but there's a big potential, and especially here in Cameroon, uh, where we got a mob for the mobile penetration, first of all, it's going to 50 more than 50 percent already. So people are getting into the tech, into the tech bay. Like uh, it's really, it's really promising. So we believe that in the next five years, it will be a very big, uh, big sector in Africa and in Cameroon in particular. And mostly all the companies, all all do, all the companies you're doing, all industries, people will involved into technology. No matter agriculture, hospitals, offices, and lawyers, anybody will need to have ICT in his uh, company. Mm -hmm. And speaking of the next few years and ICT being at the center of it all, what are your future plans for companies like Farmtech and Spoofic that you own already, and maybe even future developments that we can expect from you? Uh, the future for Spoofic is that we are looking into developing business tools that will give more value to the, to the clients. Like uh, we, we can have, no, I cannot say it here, but we have in our, our personal business tools that we'll be, we will be working on that will enable us, our clients to leverage their business to, to, to get in more revenues or to facilitate their working schedule, any kind of thing. So that's, the, that's one of the features we want for, for Spoofic. Now for Farmtech, that's the most difficult part because here in Cameroon, First of all, it's a francophone. It's mostly a francophone country, and uh, it's very, very, and extremely difficult to get a tech, a tech stuff, and go to a farmer and tell him, you know, this this stuff can help you increase your potatoes, or like he will look you and say, like, are you really serious? It's just this mobile application. So it's quite difficult, and uh, we, re we really need to get there. Like every every time, you need to go to them, sensibilize them on how to use the tech, and that this can this can help them. So we believe there's also a future there. Now nowadays we have we already have Facebook with our this group Facebook groups. So once you connect on Facebook groups, you see how farmers are getting into into the group to promote their product. So you see how they're trying to get into the technology. So now it's, it depends. You now all relies on us at Farmtech to build a good software to to specialize our mobile application that will really uh, fulfill the needs of those farmers. Would you say that shared success is a priority for you? And if it is, how do you achieve it? We want everybody to get something new every day. We're working every second, every minute, every hour. That's how we're doing. What we've witnessed with the show as we travel across the continent is that there's this uh, air of optimism and excitement from young African entrepreneurs who want to make a difference in the society, but also working closely together. What's your experience being working outside of Cameroon and with your fellow African peers. And if you haven't just yet, are there future plans to start um, working not only with Francophone Africa, but many other states across Sub-Saharan Africa? I feel it's, it's very good. It's very pretty because uh, here in Cameroon, particularly, it's very difficult. Like the people here, they're having, they're having a different mentality compared to out of the country. And working with Africans out of the country, is, we really love it because like first of all, yeah, first of all, they are amazed by the team. You know, when they, they hear your you young team, they're like, going to do this kind of work. You see the designs you do. They are like, well, can you really do this? You say yes. You say okay. They, they, they give us a chance to, do, to 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 talk, to show what we can do, to showcase our work. So I really like working with uh, the, the, the peoples out of out of Cameroon. Mm -hmm. Then yeah, because the francophone mentality is still it's very difficult compared to the anglophone mentality. So remaining to, uh, true to the name, Splufic, yeah, trying spluffic. to be incredible yeah. and amazing and doing dynamic things. And creative. And creative, yeah, creative exactly, work. which is exactly. so important. Yeah. But with all of that, how do you define true success for yourself as an individual and for the companies that you lead? 
My vision for success is more about giving value to people, impacting in their lives, and uh, you know, changing, changing, their, changing everything. That's how. But that's my vision for success. You've mentioned a lot of things that really speak to your leadership style, looking to be different, being creative, working on partnerships and making a difference. Do you believe that you're winning the right way? Yeah, I believe. <laughs> I believe I'm winning the right way. I believe. We're winning the right way and uh, all, uh, all the clients we have, we, we're working with, I believe they're on the path to winning the right way too. So that, and with that said, you're young, you're only uh, 24 years of age, you've got several companies that you look to continue to develop. What can we expect from you as an entrepreneur going forward and the impact that you hope to have on society? My, my future as an entrepreneur is, is also on that path, you know, to, to invest in human, to invest in the human, to invest in life, like, that's, that's what I'm seeing myself in the future. Not just about getting companies that can build other companies or empowering farmers or so, mm -hmm. but I really, tr I really believe that my mission is to invest in people, grow people, make them become better people, and they also invest in, li in the lives of other people, changing their lives, sustaining their livelihoods. Exactly. And as you say all of this, as we heard the thunder outside, the rain and the heavens are pouring up, uh, pouring down a lot of rain. And as you know, in African culture, that usually means that perhaps uh, what you're saying uh, will be received with uh, lots of blessings. Yes, surely that's blessings. Surely. Indeed, surely that's blessings. <laughs> no blessings, yeah. On that particular note, Jim, we wish you all of the best in your business endeavors going forward. I think given that you're winning the right way, we should cheers to you and your business endeavors. Okay. Cheers. Thank you.